What? What? Nothing. Oh, what have I done to deserve this? You feeling all right, Michael Winters? Not running a temperature. Mum. <laughs> Hello, surgery. Yeah, he is, Mike. I'll put you through. Hi, all. Oh, hang on. Uh, Steve, it's Mark McCarthy calling from the call. Oh, look, um, tell him I'm almost there. I assume you heard oh, that. Yeah, I will. Bye-bye. He says if you're not there in ten minutes, you're paying. Gangway. Careful, 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 careful. Oh, oh. Right. I'm sorry. Look, it's bad enough. No standing side jumping out at me without... I'm I sorry. Yeah, I think we should take over, Dr. Harrison. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. let's see what oh, you're oh. hiding yeah. under that thing. You're more than a woman. You're a real mate. Thanks. Oh. I suppose that's a compliment. Oh, dear, yes. That might need a stitch or two, I'm afraid. Come on. Michael? Michael, are you OK? Yeah, I'm in it. Sorry. Sorry. I thought you were piking. You hoped you mean. Oh. Remember last week? It was a fluke. Not statistically significant. Oh, yeah? Yeah, funny how that knee of yours never plays up when you hit the front. Face it, Steve. Brain is your only hope. Oh, just serve the ball. William's almost finished, so... Shouldn't be too much longer. What's this? <laughs> Certainly not homework, huh? What's wrong? Hmm? Nothing. Mum, don't. Thought it might help. Michael, look, why don't you want to talk about it? Because I don't. any consolation, I happen to know a guy who's very good with knees. No way? I guess this counts as rain. Yeah. Yes, it does. <laughs> Bad news or the really bad news? Not much of a choice. Well, you're going to be off school for at least a week. And you may even need arthroscopy. Arthro as in joint, scope as in... A device to look. Very good. Thank you. You won't look inside my knee. Well, I don't personally, but... <laughs> you know, this really good bloke who... I'll will... give him a ring and get him to see you as soon as possible. Looks like you're in the market for a new squash partner. Sorry, mate. Mm. Look on the bright side, the women of Australia will be safe for a while. <laughs> They're all yours, Steve. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Will you come back in four days? I'll try to back on the station. Good. I don't know what I'm going to do with him. Who? Michael. Good. He won't admit it, but I'm sure it's that car accident he was in. Oh, terrible business, that. You can say that again. It's got him so scared he won't go out anymore. He just shuts himself in his bedroom all day and listens to his Walkman. And he won't talk about it, you know? I've tried everything from hugs and kisses to serious discussions to stuffing him full of pizza, but I just can't get through to him anymore. Well, do you want me to have a word with him? Would you? Yeah, I was just going to suggest I do the same thing. You? Is that so peculiar? Uh, well, um, let's face it, William, you're not exactly known for your counselling skills. He doesn't need counselling. All he needs is some good, sensible advice. Yeah, well, just... Let me handle it, please. Yes, well, I think I'm like. He to be did more... get in first, William. All right. Have it your way. Is 
Is this your first arthroscopy? I call it my last. <laughs> Sorry. Leave him, sister. But uh... I said leave him. Your operation has been cancelled. What? There's been an emergency and we can't fit you in. What sort of emergency? It doesn't matter what sort. Take him back to the ward, sister. Wait a minute, I just... Mr. McCarthy, there's no point in being difficult. But my, my knee and I would just like to know what's going on. That's I'm all. not doing it, and that's that. Excuse me, sister. Is Mark McCarthy back on any of this? Are you a relation? A uh, friend. Dr. Stephen Harrison. Down the corridor and turn. Doing conscious. I'm growing for it, you know. Mark, what's going on? Your friend, the really good bloke, just cancelled the arthroscopy. Why? Next time, Steve, do me a favour and keep your specials to yourself. Wait here. Forget it, Steve. I'm going home. Just wait here, okay? Ah, oh, Doctor Harrison. My man himself. Can I have a word, Brian? It'll send me a phone call. A uh, private word? All I've got to say is don't ever send me any more patients like that. Like what, for heaven's sake? Luckily, we phoned through for his results before putting everyone in this theatre at risk. Look, Mark McCarthy is a good mate of mine. I want to know what the hell is going on. It's quite simple. Your good mate, as you call him, is HIV positive. <laughs> Come on. AIDS, Dr. Harrison, AIDS. Look, there must be some mistake. Then I'll leave you to sort it out. It'll save me the bother. Now, if you'll excuse me. Come on, spit it out. Can't be that bad. What odds are you offering? I hate to do this, but... According to their tests, you're HIV antibody positive. I don't believe it either. And before you go jumping to any ridiculous conclusions, we're going straight back to the surgery and we're going to repeat the test. There can be mix-ups. It's always possible you ended up with someone else's results. You reckon? Anything can happen. It could even be true. What do you mean? that despite the fact that I didn't agree to the tests and that they did them without my consent, that they may just be right. But how? I mean, you're not even in a high-risk group. Mark, if you've been sharing needles, I'll kill you. Come on, not that stupid. Then... You're not telling me you're gay. And then about covers it. I don't know what to say. feeling? I'm feeling like I'm not about to enjoy this. Mm. Such a pretty dress, isn't it? Here you go, Danny. You want to sit there next to Nanny? Good girl. You haven't been enjoying much lately, have you? And your mum and I think there's something bothering you. Well, there is. It's her. You know, she's at me all the time, hugging and, and kissing and wanting to talk. Eating your pizza? <laughs> Yeah, and hamburgers. Michael, she's worried about you, that's all. Well, she shouldn't be. She's a mother, she can't help it. And that accident you were in, I reckon she's got every reason to be concerned. <laughs> I keep telling you I'm all right. Michael, you don't have to pretend, eh? Look, it was a shocking thing to go through. It's perfectly understandable if it takes you a bit of time to get over it. I'm not pretending. I can handle it. Really? Yes. Look, if you want to have a chat... I 
That obviously went well. Thank you, William. I tried. Yeah, I know. It's all right. I know what it's like. Just as well you. This William. Uh, my offer still stands. Uh, still, I suppose the way my counselling skills Okay, are... if you think you can do better, you do better. Don't worry. I intend to. Mrs. Newman. We hate surgeons, too. Yeah. It's a common condition. Christina? Oh, yeah. You have been tested before with your consent. Um, I decided against it. Mark. I suppose I should get used to people wearing those. You OK? You know that old joke, what goes red, green, red, green, red, green? Frog in a blender. Well, meet the frog. I can do it without the gloves if you prefer. That'd be stupid. You do know that even if you are antibody positive, it's not an automatic death sentence. <laughs> so they say. It's true, Mark. Not everyone who's HIV positive goes on to full-blown AIDS. Well, give them time. They may never. The virus may simply lie dormant. Or it might get run over by a bus. I'm simply reminding you of the facts. I'm just making them palatable. Might as well take some blood for a T cell count while I'm here. The more the merrier. You do know that the incubation period can be 10 years or more. With all the work that's going on, who knows what's going to happen? There could be a cure or a vaccine. A vaccine won't help much, will it, if I'm positive? Then hold out for the cure. What have I got to lose? All I'm saying is don't give up hope. I won't, I promise. Any more thoughts on the meaning of existence? Yeah, I wish it would leave me alone. Here they go. Must say the surgical fraternity really distinguished itself today. It usually does. One of your colleagues ran a test for HIV antibodies on a patient of mine, without his consent, of course, and then refused to operate when it came up positive. You're kidding. No, it was pretty impressive stuff. Well, you can't blame the man. Oh, William, you can't possibly support the testing of patients without their consent. If they won't be honest with us, what choice have we got? How could he be honest if he didn't know he was positive? Then it's just as well they did the test, isn't it? But you can't, William. You... Well, you just can't. That's a betrayal of trust. Oh, come on, Robert. Don't talk rubbish. Do you really get express consent for every test that you run? In principle? Yes, we're not in practice, but the simple reason it's completely impractical. Anyway, without medical training, most people can't understand them anyway. They can if you try, will you? You can't pretend a test for HIV antibodies is like any other one. There's too many implications. Well, it's all right for you. You're not in the front line. But if I had my way, there would be compulsory testing for everyone who came into hospital. What? You can't do that. You can't think give someone the right to say no. Why, for heaven's sake? Because of what happened today, because people can't be trusted with the result. Then how are surgeons supposed to be protected? By treating every patient, especially those who refuse to be tested, as a possible source of infection. That is absolutely ridiculous. The time and money that would take, the community simply couldn't afford it. William, a negative blood test is no guarantee. A patient can be incubating the disease and still be infectious. So what's the point? We have to treat everyone as if they're a danger anyway. The point is that the more cases we know about, the more care we can take and the safer we'll all be. So it's all for your benefit? And the communities. No, I don't know, William. I think you're on shaky ground this time. Oh, well, you can say what you like, but a surgeon has every right to refuse to operate if he thinks it's dangerous. We're supposed to be doctors. Doesn't that mean anything anymore? Well, easy for you to point the finger, but would you honestly risk your life for someone like that? Someone like what? That would seem to cover it. Sometimes you really make me sick, will you? I don't know why you're all attacking me for stating the obvious. Here I am, 
I'm getting myself in shape for the sponge bath. Well, what's happened? Alex, we've got to talk. What's wrong, Mark? Not here. Uh, give me ten, OK? Still here. Just making sure you were okay after William's little performance. <clears throat> yeah, I'm used to it. Do you like coffee? Took the words right out of my mouth. You're a mate, right? I mean, other people are supposed to be mates, but you're the genuine article. Mm -hmm. So if I ask you a question, will you give me an honest answer? Try me. Am I, Stephen Harrison, a perceptive person? In what way? Well, in summing people up, in, in being able to look at them and work out what makes them go, hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Whatever, just answer the question. Well, I'd say you're not bad for a man. It's hardly a ringing endorsement. But how bad is not bad? I'm on a scale of one to ten. Steve? I'm, I'm serious. All right, serious answer. I'd say you're pretty good. Honestly? Honestly. Then how come, after 11 years of studying, drinking, chasing girls, playing squash, body surfing with one of my best friends, I still didn't know he was gay? Maybe he didn't want you to know. What difference does that make? Quite a bit, I would have thought. Come on, I still should have guessed. Does it bother you that he's gay? No, not really. Not really? Well, I'd like it to be no, but I can't help thinking that all those years in the showers, maybe you would... I don't know. Maybe he was what? Checking me out. Oh, Steve! I just feel taken advantage of. Well, now you know how a woman feels when she walks down the street. Oh, I can do without the feminist perspective, thanks no, very I'm much. No, I'm serious. Why is it OK for a man to ogle a woman, but it's not OK for a man to ogle another man? Because it makes me feel uncomfortable. So it does bother you that he's gay? Put it this way, it's going to take a bit of getting used to. I mean, it's like you're in the middle of a game, right? And then someone changes the rules and suddenly everyone's running the other way. And I suppose... I feel sort of betrayed that somehow he didn't care enough or, or trust me enough. And that makes me wonder how good a friend I was. And if we were ever really good friends at all. Anything I can do to help? Yeah, you can buy me another coffee. Done. Just don't give up on him, Steve. What else can I say, Alex? I'm um, sorry. And the thought that somehow I might have infected you just uh, rips me apart. Look, don't. We're, we've been careful. I know we've been careful. But have we been careful enough? I mean, I keep going over everything, trying to remember, trying to make sure. Mark, stop it. It's you we've got to worry about. You've got to be tested. I'll be all right. No, I've got to know. We've got to... We've both got to know. Why? It's not going to make any difference. It will to me. And, Alex, you have to know that there's been no one else. I know that. Do you? Listen, I know you're guilty. Look, I wouldn't know if anything had happened. from before. And none of us even knew this bloody thing even existed. God, it's funny, all these years I've kept thinking, why have we been so lucky, huh? <laughs> why have we escaped when all the rest... Martin, Warwick, Cameron... And now uh, we've joined them. In the T-cell shuffle. Cup of tea? Oh, not you too. Well, oh, take that as a yes. No, look, really, I don't want one. Of course you do. Make it easier for you to talk about why you're so scared of blood all of a sudden. Me? <laughs> no, it's all right. You know, I've known soldiers three times your size keel over at the sight of a prick thumb. There's nothing to be ashamed of. 
Unless you are too chicken to admit it. It was that accident, wasn't it? Coupe? Did you get nightmares? All the time. Hardly surprising. They're so real, you know. I can, I can see Terry and the others, and you're just lying there all mangled up. And I yell at them, I yell at them to keep breathing and they can't hear me, right? So I yell out louder, keep breathing, keep... And then my voice goes. And there's nothing I can do. They just stop. Well, there is something you can do, you know. Not for your friends, but uh, for yourself. So that you won't feel so helpless if you ever get caught in an emergency again, at least you'll know what to do. What? Learn some first aid. I could show you some if you like. this an ancient ritual it's called breakfast in bed it's oh, great homemade muesli mm -hmm. and sacrificial oranges how are you feeling not bad didn't sleep much mm. neither did you <laughs> i pretend better <laughs> i didn't know we had any sacrificial oranges no, i went out and got them you didn't have to do that. Well, you couldn't. I was thinking last night, a guy at the gym goes to this herbalist. And he says she's very Alex. good. Well, it can't hurt. Just don't hassle me, all right? Who's hassling? Look, this is my body and my virus. Let me handle it my own way. Well, I'm trying, Mark. I'm doing my best, so don't... So don't use your impatient science teacher voice on me. I've been thinking too. And um, if you are negative, I'll understand if you leave. Mark. Look, I had to say it. Yeah, well, don't say it again, all right? Hey, thanks for the ancient earth ritual. It's all right. No, it includes coffee. Sounds great. To control bleeding, apply firm pressure to the wound. Using a bulky dressing or pad, like so. Uh, if unavailable, apply pressure with your hand, like so. Uh, you elevate the injured part of the body, you rest the injured part of the body, and you reassure the patient. There, there, sir, there's nothing to worry about. There hasn't been a great deal of blood lost, and we'll soon be able to top you up with a couple of units. Any questions? <laughs> now, in an emergency, if there is a lot of bleeding and a bulky dressing or pad is not available, grasp the sides of the wound and firmly squeeze them together and apply strong finger pressure directly to the bleeding point. Huh? Of course, if the heavy bleeding is from the forearm, it will more than likely be coming from the radial or ulnar arteries which sweep down there and there. And if either of those are severed, the blood will just be spurt, 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 spurt. Michael? Michael? Michael, I don't know what all the fuss is about. Well, yeah. Now, come on back down and show me you can take it. You, you can't let this thing beat you. It's like a horse. 
You get thrown, you've got to get straight back on. Otherwise, you'll never feel comfortable in the saddle again. William, haven't you done enough? I'm only trying to help. Well, then leave him alone. Why, is that what you really want, Michael, to be left alone? Is it, Michael? Do you really want to let this thing beat you? Yes. Go away. Michael. Go away. What are you doing for dinner tonight? Nothing, but I've got to... Great. Go... Pick you up at 7.30? I can't, Steve. I'm busy. But you just said you weren't doing anything. That doesn't mean I'm not busy. You can't let me down, Kathy. This is what is laughingly called my hour of need. I'm sorry, Steve. Kathy. What's so important anyway? Well, apparently my friend Mark has a friend and he wants me to meet him. Is that all? All? This is major freakout. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. All right, it's minor freakout, but it's still freakout. I'm sure if your friend likes him, he'll be a nice guy. What if he isn't? He will be. Yeah. Are you really that nervous? No, I'm not that nervous. I'm sure a bit of effort. Good. Why can't you come? I mean, what are you doing that's so important? You won't like it. I can take it, Kathy. I'm washing my hair. Kathy. I know, I know it's selfish, but all I want to do is spend a quiet night at home with a bottle of conditioner. All right. I'll come. I'll come. 7.30. You look great. Yeah. This is not supposed to care anyway. <laughs> Just don't mention muscles and you'll be fine. <laughs> mm. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Warwick Ray. Did he? Yeah. He invited us to dinner. I can't. Well, you don't even know when it is. I can't, Alex. Why? Because he's sick. Alex. Look, he's my friend, Mark. What am I going to say to him? I don't know. Make up something. What? I don't know. Strange to meet you at last. Yeah. I thought you would have been taller. I don't know why. Sorry. So, are you... <laughs> no, no, you go first. You, you... I was just going to ask Alex what he does. I'm a gym instructor, but I'm not supposed to talk about it. Really? I was only joking. <coughs> nice sweater. Mm, nice legs. Oh, you noticed. That's oh, the medical training. <laughs> Coping with things. Oh, you mean the dreaded HIV? Well, it's hard. Um, I think I've got it under control most of the time. I, I mean, it's not something I would have chosen from life's bag of tricks, but <laughs> um, I'm okay. I've, I've got it in perspective. Most of the time. It's a strange sort of freedom to know what you're probably going to die of. Mark. And then the fear hits, and um, it's like an ice cold bucket of water. And I, I want to scream and shout and break walls and tell everyone it's not fair. And, and that passes, and I, um, I don't know. I, I suppose emotional yo yo covers it. Well, that's distinct from the plain yo yo he was before. <laughs> How about you? I'm all right. I want him to be tested, but he won't. He should, you know. Well, why? It's not going to make any difference. Well, at least you'll know where you stand. Oh, no, soon enough. Steve is right, Alex. Go through what you're going through. No, thanks. It's a bit irresponsible. But why? I'm not a danger to anyone. Just think it is, that's all. Do you just? Well, whoopee. Yeah, whoopee's right. William. What about your mother? You're gonna have to tell her, you know. Why? Because it's bloody unfair not to. You're pretty good at telling other people what to do. Sometimes they have to be told. Shut up, Alex. If, if I can talk him into it, will you test him? Mark. I mean it. Well... I don't mind doing it. 
I, I'd like Steve too. Sure. Why not? William. William. Oh. Right. What are we going to do about Michael? I don't see the need to do anything. Oh, for heaven's sake, William, we've both tried. All we've done is make matters worse. Admit it, we failed. No, I think failed is a trifle strong. And I think it's a complete underestimation. I mean, the way you treated him was appalling, even by your high standards. Well, I will admit I was a bit enthusiastic, but he's a strong lad. He'll get over it. But... What, just like that? Wait and see. Tomorrow he'll be a different person. I'll I hope nothing... you're right, William, for your sake. This may come as a bit of a shock to you, but even eminent surgeons are not always right about everything. Now, Robert! No wonder you haven't told him before. Don't, Alex. <laughs> he acted like a stuck-up pig. What did you expect the way you were carrying on? Oh, yes. Going about the waiter and his legs. Well, Kathy didn't mind. Well, I did. You don't need that. Maybe the judge of what I need. Why are you so uptight? Mark. They're all going to find out sooner or later. Everyone, your family, your school, your friends. So for God's sake, stop trying to live your life on an each-way bet and face up to it. Instead of being so ashamed, you won't even tell your best friend. I don't, Alex. I just don't understand why he matters so much. I mean, if he can't accept the way you are, who cares what he thinks? I care. I know. I know. There's no point dwelling on it. Come to bed. In a minute. Maybe it won't seem so bad in the morning. Alex. I want you to have that test. <sighs> How many times do we have to go over this? Would you agree? So what I want doesn't count. Of course, of course it counts. I, I just have to know, Alex. I really have to know. So what do you think of your chances? Who knows? Well, there are certain things that can be used as pointers. Well, like what? Like what you and Mark do in bed. Oh, well, he reads mostly. A science fiction. Look, if you don't want to talk about this, then that's fine by me. Oh, you want to know what sort of sex we have? Basically, anything that involves the exchange of bodily fluids can put you at risk of infection, with the passive partner in anal sex being the most at risk. You want to know who gets on top? Alex. Look, Mark and I have met after the plague had started, which means we've only ever had safe sex. We've kept our bodily fluids to ourselves. Then there's a very good chance you'll be negative. Unless... Caught it before I met him. Guess that's what we're going to find out. I guess we are. Hi. Hi. What's wrong? I'm just disappointed, that's all. Thought you could have made a bit more of an effort last night. What? So it's all my fault? I didn't say that. I just thought you could have tried a bit harder. Well, so could he, for that matter. That's not the point. Here. Thanks. You okay? I'm fine. I'm sorry you didn't like Alex. <sighs> Wasn't that? Last night. It's a bit difficult, that's all. For everyone. Don't bullshit a bullshitter, Steve. So why'd you want to see me? I got your results. Anybody positive? Uh-huh. I knew they would be. Problem is your T-cell count. It's low. Dangerously low. I, I feel fine. I know. I it's a miracle you haven't run into more trouble already. 
Just when everything seems to have got as bad as it can get, something new happens. Well, that's right. Uh... Look, I've been on the phone to some experts, and they tell me that you should be put on a course of AZT. Already? According to them, the sooner the better. But it's very much up to you. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Alex isn't here. <laughs> Never mind. It's you I came to see. I, uh, I heard your news and I thought I'd just drop around and see if there's anything I could do. You know? Why, yes. Uh, aren't I supposed to? I know what that feels like. <laughs> I try to keep my condition quiet as well. <laughs> All I can say is, I understand. Here. Go away. I was only trying to help. Just go away. I have to say something. You told him. I told him to keep it quiet. I'm not stupid. What if he doesn't? Who cares? Mark, we just got to keep you healthy. Nothing else matters. You don't know it's dead. You don't. No, no, of course not. I don't even know why I bothered to come. Oh, just shut up, Alex. Look, what's happened is terrible, but it can't be changed. So when are you going to wake up to yourself and start fighting? I said shut up! You might not have many years left, mate. For Christ's sake, just stop feeling so bloody sorry for yourself. I never stop. Not even when you know. I wish I was as tolerant as you, Kathy. I mean, I thought I was, but when it comes to the crunch, I just can't get it out of my head that. If only Mark hadn't gone gay, if only he'd stayed straight, he'd be all right, have a future. He didn't go gay, Steve. He was gay. He is gay. I know. He was unlucky. He caught the disease before we even knew it existed. He didn't have a chance. You're sad you're going to lose him. That's fine. Be sad about that. Don't be sad about what he is. I just can't help it. We're still mates. I suppose. Tell me, will you? Why do I feel like such a hopeless turd? Maybe you are a hopeless turd. Thanks, you really know how to make a guy's day. 
Well, it just so happens that I've been feeling a bit that way myself. What, because of Michael? Yeah. About that, um, homo friend of yours. Mm -hmm. Has he managed to organize anything for that knee? Hasn't been a high priority. Oh, well. You tell him to come and see me if he still wants something done about it. Are you going soft on us? The man has a surgical condition which I have offered to correct for the scheduled fee. Thank you. I don't see anything soft about that. I'll take your word for it. Now, while I may not altogether approve of his sexual uh, shenanigans, for want of a better word, it's really not my job to sit in judgment on other people's lifestyles. No matter how ridiculous they may be. You had me worried for a minute. Now, I am, after all, a doctor, and uh, that job has always entailed a certain amount of risk. And some of my colleagues are acting as though they'd only just discovered that fact. Well, take uh, hepatitis non-A and non-B, for heaven's sake. No blood test for that, which means that there is no early warning. It seems to me that there's far more risk of catching that in the operating suite than contracting the AIDS virus. <laughs> or carrying on like a pack of wimps. Sometimes, William, you amaze me. A glass of water. Anything. What are you doing to yourself? Come on, with your immune system in the state that it's in, you're just asking for trouble. He's moved out. Moved out? Why? I hit him. All my life, I've, I've felt like an outsider, an alien. I guess that's why I, I put up so many shields and hid behind so many lies, so that no one would ever know that I, I didn't really belong. Not even you, Steve. And then I met Alex, and somehow he got through. And for the first time, I started to belong. Just for the record, he's antibody negative. He's still got another three months to go before we can be sure he won't zero convert. But you can stop feeling guilty about that. Do you miss him? So much. Then why don't you call him? <sighs> why not? I'm positive. He's negative. I couldn't put him through it. What if he doesn't mind? Well, I'd mind. The best thing I can do, in, in fact, the only thing I can do is let him make a new life. Come on, Mark, you're not going noble on us, are you? No. Just sensible for once. Result. Thought you might like to know you're uh, in the clear. Uh, seems a bit beside the point now. He needs you, Alex. Uh, I've got to go. He's fallen apart without you. Don't, Steve. He's trying to make you feel guilty. Why are you playing go-between anyway? You can't stand me. 
people change. You bastard. Good luck. Thanks, man. Yeah. And you don't know how much I mean that. You're going a bit soft yourself. Mom, are you okay? Uh, yeah, I'm fine, huh? Uh, Robert! Where's William when you need him, eh? It's okay, Mom. I know what to do. No, it's all right, Michael. I won't put you through it. Mom, I can handle it. Here. Here. Just come into the surgery. Now, hold that. Hold it harder. Right. Okay. Bring this over and this around. Uh, right. And through. <laughs> now hold it to your chest. <laughs> Excellent. Oh. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I feel all strange now. Uh, Mr. Sharp, yes? would you be able to teach me how to sew people up? <laughs> With pleasure. Okay. Come and get a couple of oranges. Oranges? That's what I said. Okay. <laughs> Now, what the hell have you done? Hmm? Can I come in? Yeah, uh, bloody time. Hi, Anthony. Hi, yourself. How'd you know I was here? Uh, someone left a message at the gym. How are you feeling? Better now. How the operation go? There was a piece of bone loose in the joint and that's what was causing all the trouble. <laughs> Not quite all. Well, that's how it goes. <laughs> Have you woken up to yourself yet? You didn't come all this way just to lecture me, did you? Mm -hmm. I missed you. Me too. Going on. We've, We've got, got a surgeon here. Yeah. You ready? What did he do? He was practicing. Suturing an orange. <laughs>